Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. Hello everybody now. and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the second part of the documentary, Selena and Yolanda, The Secrets Between Them. Let's get right into this. She wanted to control her time, wanted to control her whereabouts, and she was not going to have none of that. So he kept asking me, what is she doing? Where is she at? And I could I couldn't tell him because I was more loyal to her than to him. And when I would not, anger started coming my way. Okay, you guys, so in case you missed the first part, I did upload the first part of the documentary last week. So y'all can go check that out for a little bit more context. And a lot of people wanted me to come and talk about the second part of the documentary. So that's what we're going to do. Before I begin, I would just like to kindly remind people because apparently... I, I need to because a lot of people don't understand. I am recapping the documentary, so I'm going to be talking about the facts that were presented there. I'm not saying they're true. I'm not saying they're false. I'm saying this is what happened in the documentary, okay, people? So get it together. So just for a very, very brief uh, context of the documentary. So the documentary is basically a retelling of the events that happened between Selena and Yolanda that led to Selena's uh, death. And the documentary is mainly based off Yolanda herself uh, interviewing from prison some of her family members, which are two nieces and one nephew. So they're going through a lot of the evidence and documents and recordings and pictures that they... It's, uh, kept in a storage room for all these years i would like to know like who was paying this storage room and then of course we have two of the actual prosecutors who prosecuted yolanda Saldivar, and then we have a few journalists uh, just to give their insights and their opinions on the case so we had left off with the family on part one basically showing uh, what they call evidence to prove that the notion that yolanda was a disgruntled employee who was trying to get revenge uh, by killing selena because she was getting fired is totally false so Five days after the incident, a bag was found in the hotel room. They kept it in the safe. And that was Yolanda's purse. That was her actual bag. And once they looked inside of that, they found a letter of resignation that Yolanda had co-authored along with her attorney in which she was saying that she was going to quit Selena, etc. And in the card, I did find it very interesting that she said that working with Selena's family members had made it impossible for her to continue working here. What was also very fascinating was that when the producers of the documentary were asking the prosecutors about the letter of resignation, the lead prosecutor didn't even know what he was talking about. He had to, like, he was like, a letter? And then he, when he finally remembered, he was like, oh yeah, there was a letter. So you would think this letter would be pretty significant if she was resigning and actually just to prove the validity of the letter there was a statement that chris perez selena's husband gave to the police in which he said that the letter was indeed um by yolanda and was going to give it to selena they also played a, uh, some voicemails that selena had left for yolanda it was about five of those voicemails in which yolanda was at, um sorry selena was at the airport and she was uh, taking a fly so she kept on calling Yolanda over and over and over again but Yolanda wasn't answering so those voicemails are still there which honestly hearing Selena's voice is kind of like chilling you know uh, but yeah so in the voicemail she was basically just saying like hey Yolanda it's Selena call me back hey Yolanda it's Selena I'm at the airport I just got on the flight and, and stuff like that and the last one she actually said okay I'll call you back when I when I get to Miami Buffy and of course Buffy is the nickname that Selena used to have for Yolanda okay but with that being said we understand it's been established Yolanda and Selena good friends, partners, um, Yolanda helped her a lot in her business, Selena, etc. We know all of this. But the question remains, why did Yolanda buy this gun? Why did she buy this weapon? Her answer to this is simple. Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's father. So Abraham Quintanilla is not a good guy. And I, I say that, uh, without hesitation i really don't think he's a good guy and it was even portrayed like that in the movie a lot of people were trying to tell me in the comments in my previous video well that's just a typical mexican american guy no no okay that is not how a typical mexican american dad should be behaving okay he was extremely 
extremely controlling of Selena. Selena was 23 years old, which in retrospect, she was still young, but she was a married woman. So he was way too involved in her personal life and her business to the point where it wasn't even okay. And I understand he was her father and her manager. Of course, he wanted the best for her. But Abraham Quintanilla has continued to exploit Selena even after her death. But going back to this documentary, uh, Yolanda says that Abraham is the reason that she got this gun. And actually, another thing I, I want to say really quickly is that a lot of the people interviewed in the documentary, they themselves said that he's definitely an intimidating man. One of the journalists who they were interviewing, her name is... Marta Flores, and she was a journalist for Univision. She said that she does not think he's a good person. And she, when they were trying to ask her more questions about it, she actually said she didn't even feel comfortable saying this on camera because they know his low reputation and how, how bad he is. And I also find it really interesting that all these people who want to make excuses for him, y'all be the same people criticizing Britney Spears' dad and others. So make it make sense. They also didn't go into detail about this in the documentary, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I'm just going to quickly talk about it and just kind of like put it out there, and I'm not, I'm just going to do that. So it is a known fact that when Selena went to the hospital, they did try and do it to try uh, to do a blood transfusion, and he said that he was not going to allow that because of his religion. Now, years later, he had come out and said that at that point, there was so much blood that it wouldn't have been able to save her. But they are not really going to know that because he didn't permit it. So it, that's a fact. So that's his religion. Then it is what it is. But just remember that if ha had she had blood, perhaps she could have survived. But he decided not to do that. So going back to Yolanda, she said that the reason she got this gun is because she felt that Abraham was threatening her, attacking her, and following her around. So for a while, she had been just, she felt as if people were following her. She says that she remembers a blue truck going after her. But wait, because there's more to the story and there's more to this part of the second doc, uh, the second part of the documentary. So Selena, etc. was doing very well. The business was looming. And as I told you guys in the first part, Selena loved to sing. She loved to perform and dance, but her true passion was in fashion and designing. That's what she really wanted to do. So Selena, etc. was the first time that she was truly able to do something that was her passion and that Abraham didn't have control over so it got to the point where Selena started to go to Mexico to start you know trying to grow the business trying to find manufacturers and just all that business stuff right so they would go to Monterrey and this has been out there for a while now so it is said that Selena started to have an affair with a doctor his name is Ricardo Martinez. And like I said, this is not the first time I, we had heard about this. There was act, there's, there's actually been things that have been said that have been way more dark about him performing certain procedures on her that I'm not even going to talk about because this whole doctor thing makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable to talk about someone having an affair when they're not here anymore and it's really not relevant, but you'll see why they're bringing this up. So allegedly this uh, affair started to grow. Um, Selena and this said doctor allegedly were in love with each other. When the incident happened and Selena died, they tried to get him to testify. The defense thought that perhaps they could, you know, make a case and involve him somehow. Initially, he had said none of it was true. He denied all of it. Interestingly enough, years later, he did a special with Univision in which he is now revealing everything and saying that it was true. So that even is kind of weird to even think about what is, is this true or is it not? Yolanda was saying it was true. He said it wasn't, but then years later he said it was true. So could that mean that Yolanda was telling the truth? I don't know. I really don't know. I wasn't even born when all this was happening. You know what I'm saying? So the nieces and nephew... Uh, they show some they show a little love letter that the doctor had written Selena it wasn't really a letter it was like a little a tiny card that said you brighten my life I love you your good friend Ricardo it was written in Spanish but they read it they also showed some plane tickets uh, that you that the plane tickets that were being purchased when Yolanda and Selena would go across the country and one of the things that Yolanda actually said out her mouth was that she really regretted this because she said that she had to lie a lot. 
she says that she had to lie a lot in covering up this affair and she says that it was killing her inside knowing that Chris, Selena's husband, was over here and he had no idea. So she says that she definitely regrets that. But yeah, so the point is... Just remember that snippet of the story. Remember this doctor and affair. But again, going back to why she got the gun, it's because she she thought that it was Abraham who was um, coming after her and doing things. For example, um, breaking her windshield or popping her tires. Now, when she initially got it, she actually showed it to Selena and said, I bought this because I need to protect myself. Selena said, please return that because I... You don't need it, and I promise you that my father will not do anything to you. I will protect you. Yolanda returns it. A few months later, weeks, months ago, she says that the attacks and all this stuff continue to happen. People being people following her around. So she goes back, and she buys it again. And she actually bought the exact same one. She wanted that exact same one. So then one day before March 31st, before the day that it all happened, Yolanda and her sister were coming from Monterrey. They were coming back to Texas. Yolanda stops at a Whataburger. She, goes to the, she orders. She then goes to the bathroom. And she says that two men go into that bathroom and beat her up. Has this been proven? No, it has not. But... That's what she's saying happened. They assaulted her. And it got so bad, you know, there she was screaming. So it got to the point where people were kind of noticing. So they, the, the men left. And she says that she was so scared that she didn't even get her food. Like that she just got in the car and told her sister, let's get out. But years later, once Yolanda was already convicted and, and, and sent to jail, apparently she got a letter from a man named Lorenzo Salinas. Lorenzo Salinas wrote her this letter, allegedly. He said that he knew who was behind this. How did he know this? Well, because he was the chauffeur of the doctor in Mexico. He was Dr. Martinez' chauffeur. And in the letter, Lorenzo is saying that he's telling Yolanda that he really uh, apologizes and regrets everything that happened because he says that he knows firsthand that it was the doctor who was sending those men after her. Wow. But why? Well, they are saying that Yolanda was the one person when Selena would go to Mexico who would really be overprotective of her. Because, of course, you know, Yolanda was there as her business partner or not business partner, but like her employee. So she and she was also her friend. So she felt a need to protect her, especially because Selena was married and the doctor did not like this. So it got to the point where he wanted to get Yolanda out of the picture. So then, 22 hours before March 31st, it was the night before, Yolanda tells Selena what happened. And Yolanda says, Selena told her, go to a day's in motel and wait there, I will go. 10 hours later, it was later that night, Selena did end up going to this hotel. Chris actually took her there. Yolanda says that she told Selena, here get everything, get all the documents, get any information that you need because I'm done. I'm no longer working with you. I just got assaulted in this Whataburger bathroom and I cannot deal with this anymore. Please take everything. It's in my truck and go away. Yolanda says that Selena didn't want to because she was like, oh, Chris is in the car. He's waiting for me. I'll come back tomorrow. So then she leaves. Then apparently the next morning, this was Friday, March 31st, Two hours and 45 minutes before it happened, it was 9 a.m., Selena takes Yolanda to the hospital to check up on her and see if all this assault that she was claiming happened really did happen. Now, there were some bruises, some scratches, but they weren't really able to 100% um, give validity to the claims. So I think that Selena perhaps thought that Yolanda was making this up. So it, just even thinking of that, it shows you how there was already a problem because Yolanda is thinking that Abraham was doing all these things to her. But in actuality, according to Lorenzo, it was the doctor. So Yolanda didn't know that. She thinks it's Abraham. Perhaps that's why Selena was getting angry because she was like, well, you're accusing my father of doing such thing that I just took you to the hospital. And it's, it turns out that it's not true. They go back to the hotel room and this is where things will always be a mystery because all of this other stuff can be debated. It can be this, it could be that. There's police reports, there's hospital records, all of that. But what happened once they got into that hotel room, 
nobody will know because there were only two people there, Yolanda Saldivar and Selena Quintanilla. And I wasn't there. Were you? No, you weren't. None of us were. So unfortunately, we're never going to know. Only God will know. So those two people, one of them is, in a, is not here no more. Her life was gone, so she'll never be able to say anything. But the other one was Yolanda. So this is what she said. She says that once they were in that hotel room, she tells Selena, I'm done. I'm quitting. I can't be anywhere near around you anymore because this is getting too much. Selena apparently told her, no, you can't do that. You can't leave me hanging with all of this. And you're probably going to go and you're probably going to go tell my secret about me and the doctor. Yolanda claims that she said, you know, I don't know what you want me to do. Grabs the gun, um, pulls the trigger and says, do you want the only thing I could think of right now is just blowing my brains out. She claims that Selena said, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Let me close the door. Yolanda says she, she got her hand where, where she was holding the gun and she said, no, I said, don't close the door. And boom, it went off. Wow. It's, it's so chilling and it's so disturbing to even, even try to think about it, you know, because like I said, we will never know what happened, but what we do know is that a bullet was shot from a weapon and it hit Selena in the back and she's not here anymore. And because of an argument, a life was ended. Uh, a, it's I can't even fathom to think about it because um, I'm 20, you know, and Selena was only 23, so I can't imagine, you know, that's so young. And... You know, the, the it's so much of what could have been, you know, her career, how that could have improved or uh, her possible future family, children. Wow, it, it, it's a lot. I'm kind of speechless right now, but that's what Yolanda is saying. And then the the very end of the documentary is it closes with Tina. And here, I my heart did break for Tina because she was in tears, and she said that for her, and I can't imagine how much how this how this must have felt for her because she was truly heartbroken because Selena was her friend, and Yolanda was her aunt, so the three of them would always be hanging out together. How can you process what one of your good friends dying? And it was in the hands of your aunt. And she actually couldn't help herself. She started crying out loud. Because she says that it's always been something so hard in her life. And even here, she said, even doing this documentary, me trying to defend my aunt is coming at the expense of me like making it sound like trying to diminish what she did to my friend. She said, I'm in both sides. I can't, I can't choose. Like, it was so sad seeing that. Last thing Yolanda says in that prison interview is that she truly regrets all of it. She takes full responsibility and full accountability for what she did and for ruining her family's life. This That's something that she realizes and that she is aware of that simply becoming them simply being the family member of Yolanda Saldivar it was already going to be horrible you know being teased at school being bullied not being able to go out to certain places in public or certain parties so she takes full accountability for that and I I can't imagine having that um that brunt knowing that you took your best friend's life and you ruined your whole family and now you're in prison so if you'll, so Yolanda is um, available for parole in 2025, so in about a year from now. Even if she were to get released, which I think she probably will, her life will never, ever, ever be normal. Like, ever again. She will never be able to live a life that doesn't involve what she did, even if she's out of the prison cell. And I personally think that 30 years in prison and your life being ruined and even your family's life being ruined is enough of a punishment. She, Her last words were that she misses Selena and that she will see her again in heaven. She going to heaven? I don't know. I'll allow God to be the judge of that because that's actually the only judge who's going to decide that. But yeah, you guys, this was a very interesting documentary. Again, 
it was really all new. I mean, all old news. It, nothing really was new, especially for us who have seen previous interviews of hers. I, if I would, if I could say, the only thing that I, I guess, is kind of new was having those recordings and some of those documents and letters, and seeing that quote unquote evidence. But other than that, it was pretty repetitive of everything that has been said so far. I think that the hardest part and the saddest part uh, about this story is that this could have been prevented so many ways. Had Abraham been more lenient, had Selena, you know, not gone to Mexico so much, had had this real alleged relationship with the doctor not happened, had Yolanda actually quit, I don't know, maybe even a week before this, had she not gone back to buy that gun again. There's so many things that could have prevented that, but unfortunately it still happened, so Yolanda had to pay. I'm sorry, but she had to pay. She had to go to prison because at the end of the day, she took someone's life. And when you take someone's life, you have to pay and you go to prison. Again, like I said last video, do I think it was premeditated that she woke up that day saying that she was going to do this and that she planned it and that she plotted? No, I don't because of the relationship she says they had. But this is truly a tragic situation in every sense of the word but you guys let me know your thoughts and comments about what this second part was about i will say if there are any comments like there was in the first video um, that are insulting derogatory with bad words you're getting your ass blocked and as a future attorney who's going into law school this fall, I love a difference of opinion. I love a good debate. But when you're going to come on here with a close mind, low intellectual abilities, you're not welcome, okay? But thank you guys so much for watching. Honestly, I usually just recap reality TV shows, but I really do like... Uh, talking about true crime so if there were ever a true crime you know uh, story that y'all would want me to talk about i would totally do that so y'all let me know in the comments please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch y'all next time you have a great one bye